Hello and welcome to Motorsport Asia's coverage of GT Asia. I'm Jonathan Green. This week we go inside GT Asia to Korea to look back at the first two rounds of the 2014 Championship, which took place at the Korea International Circuit. The Korea International Circuit is approximately 400 kilometers south of the capital Seoul in the province of Yongnam. Built in 2010, this purpose-built Formula One circuit designed by Herman Tilke is state-of-the-art. A real challenge for the GT Asia field of cars, teams and drivers. This year celebrates the largest field of cars and drivers ever assembled in the region. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Porsche, Aston Martin, Audi and McLaren all represented fastest growing markets for these cars in the world. The championship kicks off the 2014 campaign here in Korea and then will traverse the Asian region racing in iconic venues in Japan, Malaysia, China and Macau. Okay, this is the fourth year for GT Asia and this year we respect it. It will be a very growing for the new team, new car and the new circuit but we'll be in the fourth year for GT Asia. And Today is my, our first event in Korea, uh, International Circuit. And then we go to Japan, Sapan, and then a Macau event. This year we have a lot of professional drivers around the world with a great car and a great team. Well, let's take a look who's taking part. And as Paul said, it's a real mix of drivers from all forms of motorsport around the globe. Two-time champion Mott Wenson of Singapore will drive the number three Ferrari 458 with Clearwater Racing and he'll be teamed up with Japanese GT star Kenasawa. They should be one of the favourites for the overall championship. For Aston Martin, there's the massively accomplished Italian Max Visa, 2013 Trofeo Lamborghini champion. Lamborghini is also the choice of GT Asian champion from 2010, Dilantha Malagamua of Sri Lanka. Jeffrey Lee sticks with his Audi R8 and he teams up with one of the fastest men in Asia, Marchi Lee, the Absolute Racing R8 LMS Ultra. Clearwater Racing are without doubt another favourite for the overall title with Japanese Hiroshi Hamaguchi, McLaren MP4 12C. And talking of Japanese, GT Asia are delighted to welcome former motorcycle Grand Prix ace Takuma Aoki. He joins Malagamua at Delango Racing in the LP560. But perhaps the biggest star amongst this year's ranks is rookie to the series but vastly accomplished very fast factory McLaren driver Rob Bell of the UK. Another rookie and making her debut with Aston Martin in GT3, Natasha Sita of Malaysia. Frank Yu is a long time GT3 racer in Asia. Last year led the championship for a while. This year he's with Craft Bamboo in the Aston Martin Vantage and he's teaming up with former Australian V8 star Warren Luff. Just a quick look then at some of those involved in the series. Later in the show we'll hear from more of them as they prepare for this year ahead. Now, one of the favourites for this year's series is the Clearwater Ferrari 458 of Mott Wensung and Keta Sauer. Both have tasted GT glory in many different cars. But their combination, the 458, could be potent. Oh, this year I think it's going to be tough. The grid looks fantastic, uh, but really happy to be back. We've got a uh, good uh, brand new 2014 Ferrari 458 GD3 uh, partnering with Sawasan. So uh, hopefully we can be consistent through the course of the year and then challenge for it uh, towards the uh, finish line. The same could be said for Hamaguchi-san and Rob Bell in the McLaren. I'm here in Asia for the first time racing, which is fantastic. Uh, I'm a McLaren factory driver, so McLaren tell me where to go racing. Uh, so when they said there's a possibility of coming to Asia and racing with Clearwater and Hiroshi, then I said for sure that sounds really good and uh, I was excited to, to come here and race for the first time. McLaren offered Rob um, for this series to pair with me and I think this is a great opportunity. Um, I have so much to learn from him and the team had so much to learn from him as well. So um, this will be a, a great combination. So far, I think uh, the competition is very strong, really good. You know, you have good cars, good drivers, very good teams. Um, so, so far, we are still learning about the tyre on, on the, the, the McLaren, on the Yokohama. So we have a little bit of work to do, for sure. For this weekend, um, we have to finish the race first. Um, but for the whole season, we are here to be in the championship. The Aston Martin Vantage V12 Challenge will be led by Italian star Max Wieser. 
along with Xiang Xin, another accomplished Trofeo runner. They represent the new MB Racing Team, run by Hong Heng Sun. Basically, this new team was uh, formed early this year, and uh, they decided uh, to participate in GT Asia. And uh, we have about four months to get everything uh, prepared. As you see, everything behind me are all new. We start from scratch. The actual people who really set up the teams, they are the two drivers from China, Mr. Jiang Xin and Mr. Sean Fu. Uh, they wanted uh, their own team. As you can see, it's called Team MV. It was uh, named by them. They are all new to most of the circuits. Uh, I think this year is more on to the learning curve. But uh, of course, we try our best uh, to do well. Audi are back again this year, and they too boast a very strong lineup of the likes of former Formula One star Alex Jung of Malaysia, the multiple single seater and sports car champion Marchi Lee of Hong Kong. Yes, yes, we come back again with Jeffrey, and uh, we been. This is the third season. I, I'm really happy to see the um, GT Asia have been a proper championship, become an FIA event, and uh, it's a great feeling. In the number 97 Aston Martin is Craft Bamboo's Frank Yu, who along with Warren Luff of Australia are both going to be a force to be reckoned with. The team is very, very, very uh, uh, spot on. Uh, obviously they have been um, uh, working on the championship two, three months ago already, getting all the preparation. Um, and so far, it's the first time that the, the whole crew is um, together in the race weekend. And, and not a single mistake. Uh, everybody's doing well. Our cars are running very well. The setup. I think uh, we'll have a, a better chance because uh, the championship is for, following the uh, SRO uh, balance of performance. So uh, we're going to be on a pretty level playing field. And uh, so this year, I think we'll have a, a, a much better chance. Yeah, but of course. Uh, the field is very competitive this, this year. I think it's more than last year, so uh, we'll do our best. In the 99, Aston Martin is girl racer Natasha Sita of Malaysia trying GT3s for the first time. Just to feel confident throughout the whole race, improve myself. You know, this is a new direction and it's a new car that I'm just learning. And to be able to finish in the top 10 is good enough. It's good. And to, you know, if we can get up into the top five, even better. So just bring the car home and do well. Sri Lanka's number one international driver is affable Delantha Malagamua. He won the inaugural GT Asia Series back in 2010 and is back again with the all new Lamborghini FL2. This year I bought a new car, the new FL2, uh, which was used only for a few months last year. So uh, it seems to be good, so today is the first time we went out for GT Asia testing and uh, we skipped the first uh, session, so we did only the second session, but uh, we won the pace, so we did the 12.8, which others were doing in the mo morning, so we have two more testing tomorrow. The car is good, we have a new team, new car, so everything looks fresh, so hopefully, because last year I didn't do many races, I did, I did one or two races, then we have the same thing, we had issues with my old car, and my car, old car has been used by Aoki Takuma in the GTM class. So everything is new and I think still we can run for the championship this year. Great to see Delantha back to racing full time and with the hard charging Aoki racing in GTM, we should be hearing a lot from the Sri Lankan based team. We'll take a short break, we'll be back with more after this. Welcome back to Inside GT Asia, where this week we're in Korea at the international circuit for the first two rounds of the 2014 GT Asia series. As the drivers prepared for their first qualifying sessions, they were limbering up for a drive into the unknown as this was the first time the series has been to this Korean circuit. The track itself is 5.5 kilometers long, 18 turns, 
that is dominated by a straight from turns two to three, which is over a kilometre long. There are fast sweeping fourth and fifth gear turns, as well as tight second gear turns, so set up for these big GT cars wouldn't be easy, especially as there's been very little preseason testing. For some, it was their first time in their new cars. I love the, the track, the track is very fun. Um, it's a bit far, but it's really fun and uh, to drive and, uh, you know, it's a challenging track and tricky. I love the circuit. There's so much variety in terms of you've got high speed, you've got low speed, change the direction. If you, if you went through and designed your perfect circuit as to what elements you would want on it, uh, this circuit ticks all the boxes. It's fantastic. Very long and uh, very technical, I have to say. Not so much up and down, but uh, it's very technical. It's probably one of my favourite circuits I've driven, so I um, really enjoyed it. From the first time I rolled out of the pits and did a lap, it was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. I like it, actually. Yesterday was a little bit, mm, but today I, uh, I like it a lot better today. So the drivers like it, and as they headed out for qualifying, conditions were perfect to really push for a good lap. As they headed out for qualifying, for many it was their first real opportunity to push this 5.5 kilometer circuit, which they really didn't know that well. And to everyone's surprise, it was the new boys, MBT. Maybe that's how they got the name. They were the quickest with the Aston Martin driven by Italian Super GT Japan star, Andrea Caldarelli. Yeah, it was actually was a bit better than what uh, we were expecting and uh, in terms of lap time. In terms of uh, feeling of the car, of course, uh, I'm getting used more and more with the car, so I get better and better feeling. In second place, the hard-charging Ferrari 458 have kept a sour of Japan, despite traffic set the second best time to be partnered by Singapore's Mok Wen Sung. When I go into the second flying lap, I met uh, one of the uh, traffic at the fast chicken part, so I lost the two, three, ten. And in third place, and making his debut in the series, Rob Bell of Great Britain, hoping to take McLaren 12C to domination here in Asia in 2014. We're not just not at one with the Yokohama yet. You know, we haven't got the database, we haven't used the Yokohama before with this configuration of car, so we're still learning. On then to qualifying two. Almost 23 degrees C for qualifying two. Addis Alex Jung and Matt Solomon discuss how the R8 is feeling and everything seems positive. The Ferraris were once again quick off the mark. Nazareth Muzian of Singapore, Ruiagos of Portugal. The spirit of race, Ferrari number 38. The fastest Ferrari of all was the sister Spirit of Race car, Ferrari Anthony View and David Rizzo. View putting in a respectable 209.037. Also going well, Delantha Malagamua. The number 24 Lamborghini, as was the 32 Clearwater Racing McLaren of Hiroshi Hamaguchi, who took the 12C to second overall. Sure, I'm happy, I'm, though I'm stuck to the traffic a bit, I don't think I could have cut uh, another 8.10. Matt Solomon, the youngster from Hong Kong, did an excellent job in the Audi to go P3 in the R8. Alex Young and the Audi management very satisfied with a good day at the office. Um, you know, after the first lap, I already caught some of the slower drivers around the back, which was, you know, was unfortunate, but you know, it happens in, in, in my fastest lap. 2014 rookie Natasha Sita in the 99 Aston Martin got sixth place overall. She too was bolted by a busy session, but still carved out a respectable 211.9. And you know, there's a lot of traffic that was that was building up on circuit, so I didn't manage to put in another, you know, faster lap than 211. And in the GTM class, Takuma Aoki in the older Lamborghini was quietly confident after a good session. I I have fun to the race. Then so I can I I I hope to get podium. The former Grand Prix motorcycle star may be in a wheelchair, but he isn't letting that affect his racing in any way whatsoever. So with both sessions completed and excellent conditions, the scene was set for two very competitive GT races. We'll take a short break, we'll be right back to see how the action played out.
Welcome back to Inside GT Asia from Korea. I'm Jonathan Green, bringing you all the action from rounds one and two of the 2014 Championship. A new circuit for all the drivers involved and very little testing time to get up to speed. It didn't take long for everyone to get into the swing of it. Warm up nicely. Caldarelli on the pole position in the Aston Martin. But he will soon be under big pressure. First from the Ferrari. Get a sour going around the outside. And then on the inside, Rob Bell. After corner two, long straight, we, uh, we lost a little bit of speed. Certainly plenty of drama in the first stint. Here's Alex Young clashing with one of the Ferraris early on. Then Ketasawa coming back into the lead, but only briefly for the McLaren sit back up the inside. Once into the lead, Rob Bell starts to build on that lead, ahead of Sauer and Calderelli now in third place. Craig Baird in fourth, and Alex Young in fifth. Plenty of drama also for Warren Love. Had a, had a couple of moments where we came together, so it was, it was good fun. Frank Yu, like the rest of the drivers, waiting for the pit stops. Some were good, some not so good. But uh, we lost gearbox pressure, which meant it was stuck in fourth gear, so uh, we had to pit early. And it was early doors for Sean Fu too, a complete replacement here on the Aston Martin. Our uh, front left door was broken during the driver change, the door uh, fell down and then we lost uh, almost uh, 60 seconds uh, during the driver change. But the biggest drama of all was Jeffrey Lee, stuck out on track in the Audi and that brought out the safety car. Jeffrey Lee was out of the race. Well, we had a clutch problem, the clutch slipped, so uh, it's jammed so we couldn't get, it, uh, get the power in, so finished. After the changes, McLaren led with Hamaguchi ahead of Mok Wing Sung in the Ferrari until this moment when Frank Yu spun him out of contention. When I got hit from the back, turned around, hit again, um, got the radiator busted, then I had to um, pull the car to the side and stop. Going in one of the corners because Wang had coat tires and, and um, I felt sorry uh, <laughs> we had contact. Onto the last lap, a massive pressure for the McLaren Hamaguchi. From Anthony Liu in second place to the Ferrari number 37, his teammate Davide Rizzo watching on anxiously as they came to the final few corners. Hamaguchi just went offline slightly onto the marbles. That's all it took. After the safety car, I had um, no grip whatsoever with the tires. Um, under stair entry and over stair mid corner, um, I was just trying to stay on track, but I guess I couldn't. And with Hamaguchi out of the way, check a flag wave for the number 37 458 Ferrari of Anthony Liu. An Italian, and there Rizzo. Come in here, here. Come up the chairs. They win the first race of the 2014 season. And for many, this was a surprise. So too, a win for Takoma Aoki. A fantastic win for the man in the wheelchair. His first international win at this level. On then to round two. Again, perfect conditions here in Korea. Drivers getting more dialed in with every session. Certainly a lot to think about after race one. Rolling start again, but it would be the gentleman drivers this time. Pressure at the start for Matt Solomon as he bounced over the curbs. Makes it through the first corner. Then boom, straight got T-bone from the, from the side and you know, something I wasn't expecting. Out front and building on that lead, Anthony Liu from China in the 458. And behind, Matt Solomon doing an excellent job of carving his way through. Look at this move on Frank Yu. Superb. Meanwhile, the Aston Martins were in a battle of their own. A three way battle indeed. Number nine, Xian Zin. Partner, of course, to Max Visa. Matt Solomon, looking up the inside now of Hamaguchi, 
Came from a long way back, but superbly done. Solomon through again. Uh, you know, dropped a place on the start, was fourth, uh, but fought my way back to second. And then... So with Anthony Liu in the Ferrari out front, Matt Solomon was holding off Hamaguchi in third place at the number 32, McLaren. And as the clock ticked down here in round two, the battle continued between Frank Yu, Jiang Xin up the inside here, and Natasha seated just behind, choosing to stay behind her teammate. But with the old tyres, I couldn't hold off uh, uh, the rest of the field, so... The pit stops, and Alex Jung comes out. The absolute racing Audi R8 ahead of the Ferrari number 37 of Davide Rizzo, who also changed the spirit of the race. It didn't take long for Rizzo to get right behind the Audi. Anthony Liu had done his bit. Now Rizzo was out on track, putting massive pressure on Alex Jung. But what we didn't know is that Jung was in trouble because the Audi R8 had left upright problems and soon out of the race completely allowing the Ferrari to once again dominate in round two. Maybe we were looking a bit comfortable and then um, the front left uh, upright broke. So we think it was contact from uh, hitting the curb too hard on the first lap. Another big story of the day though in the GTM class, Dananta Malagamua and Aoki. Aoki changed his settings to allow Malagamua to team up with him and he passed board back to take the lead in GTM. On the straight, I was side by side, but it was really good. So it was, I really enjoyed the race. It was really nice and no touching. And... So Delango win the GTM class, but it's the Ferrari of Spirit of Race. David Rizzo winning again. I'm quite happy with our performance today. Even we had the 12 seconds penalty at the, at the pit. And we fight until the end. I saw the car was coming very quick. And then I tried to push as much as I can. And then it was, it was good. We, we make it. In GTM, Aoki could hardly believe it. He won on his own in round one and then does it again with his teammate Malagamua. They swap between the hand controls to the feet controls. Quite incredible. But a great day for the 458. It doesn't get any better than that. And in fact, I think everyone involved enjoyed their weekend. And if we look at the results, Davide Rizzo and Anthony Liu out front with 36 points ahead of Rob Bell and Hamaguchi now on 32. 23 with Warren Luff and Frank Yu. And they're ahead of Max Visa and Tianzin. In the team's championship, well, Spirit of Race lead the way with 52 points, 10 ahead of Clearwater Racing. Craft Bamboo AMR in third place ahead of the new boys MBT with 29. Absolute Racing in fifth place. And in the GTM class, Takuma Aoki leads the way with 36 points ahead of Ford back. And George Chow equals second place with 32 points. Jack Jung in third. Great start to the 2014 GT Asia Series. Some highlights, some wonderful moments. And we'll be doing it all again from Japan next time out. Until then, from me, Jonathan Green, goodbye for now.